workers across the country. In Texas, it is now illegal to compensate workers who help voters who don't speak English, and for election officials to encourage eligible voters to apply to vote by mail. In Fulton County, Georgia, a county that historically votes Democratic, the number of ballot boxes has been reduced from 38 to eight. That's one ballot box for every 100,000 voters. And in Florida, ballot drop-off boxes can only be utilized during early voting hours, and boxes must be located at either a county's elections office or early voting sites. Before President Trump, Republicans at least tried to pretend their laws weren't blatantly discriminatory. But now, they aren't even attempting to hide the fact that they are purposefully trying to make it darn near impossible for black people and other people of color, elderly individuals, students, working families, and people with disabilities to vote. The fact that Republicans continue to claim that these voter suppression tactics are necessary to protect election integrity would be laughable if it weren't so deeply dangerous to our democracy. We all know that countless investigations have uncovered absolutely no evidence of systemic or widespread voter fraud. We all know that the 2020 election was the most secure election in our country's history. And we certainly all know this is not about voter fraud. It's about advancing a political agenda by denying large swaths of Americans their fundamental right to vote. If this isn't un-American, I don't know what is. Which is why voter suppression is the most urgent crisis facing our country today. And which is why it is the single most pressing issue the Senate must address. Yes, we need to pass Build Back Better, and we need to fight against attacks on a woman's right to make decisions about her own body, attacks on the LGBTQ community, attacks on unions, and much more. Because battles for rights that we thought we had won don't stay won. But we won't succeed in preserving these hard-won rights if we don't protect the right to vote. To quote my friend and colleague, Senator Warnock, quote, Voting rights are preserved, preservative of all other rights, end quote. We are nearing the one-year anniversary of the attack on the U.S. Capitol. This violent insurrection and mob violence was the direct result of blatant lies told by the former president and his supporters about systemic fraud and a stolen election. We are still learning the consequences of what happened that day. But we know for certain this act of domestic terrorism was an attack on free and fair elections in this country. Yet Republicans continue to spread the same lies about election fraud and continue to push through legislation at the state level to silence Americans across the country. Congress must take action to restore the integrity of our voting system and make sure every American's voice is heard and counted. And we've tried. We've tried four times to stop these unconstitutional state-level laws from undermining our elections. We've tried to pass common sense reforms that would, for example, allow all eligible voters to vote by mail, make election day a federal holiday so all working families can vote, and establish federal criminal penalties for deceiving voters with false and misleading information about voting. And most importantly, we've tried to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, which would give the Department of Justice the tools to keep these blatant voter suppression laws from being enacted in the first place. Only one Republican joined us in voting for this bill, the same bill that was being touted as bipartisan is crystal clear by now that Republicans have absolutely no interest in protecting 
the right to vote. For Republicans, voter suppression and gerrymandering is their path to victory. Democrats cannot sit back and allow a political party to maintain power by denying Americans their right to vote. I want to quote Senator Warnock again. He said, quote, as we cast that vote to begin addressing the debt ceiling, the same chamber is allowing the ceiling of our democracy to crash in around us, end quote. We figured out a way to save our economy. We can surely figure out a way to save our democracy. Mr. President, filibuster reform is the path Democrats need to take to fight back against the Republicans' all-out voter suppression assault on our democracy. I call on my Democratic colleagues to act. Mr. President, I yield the floor. Mr. President, I yield. 